truth in those kind of moments. But God hates lying. God detests lying. And those little moments like that are the moments that God sees into the real picture into my heart and into who I am as a Christian and whether I'm really committed to serving Him and being like Him or whether I'm not. Those are the moments that matter. Church, we hurt ourselves because we're a part of that body where we don't want to do damage by lying to our own selves, to our own body, which is, of course, the church at large. Now, let me, let me define for you. Maybe I should have did this up front, but let me define for you what lying really is. How do we determine or how do we define lying? Let me make it very simple for you. Pastor Randy's definition, this is lying, whatever is not the truth. I know it's profound, it's deep. But it's really simple, it's really the bottom line. If it's not the truth, then it's a lie. It's really that simple. It boils down to that easy of, of uh, comprehending whatever's not the truth is a lie. Remember that truth is in us. How? Because Christ is in us. Christ said, I what? Last week we talked about it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Christ in us. So we have the truth within us as Christ comes, lives within us as Christians. We have the truth of Christ in us. We can therefore be truthful, can't we? See, sometimes we think, oh, I can't help it. I, just lying is a part of who I am. And the old self, yeah. But Christ in us says, I can be truthful because the truth of Christ is within me. And through Christ, I can do all things. And so when we make that change, when we go from the old way of life to the new way of life, this is a challenge to deal with in our lives oftentimes. Because we're in that old lifestyle many times, and of course you answer the question for yourself and you apply this to your own life, but many times lying is, is a part of the old lifestyle. It's a natural, normal part of life. It's what we do. I lied to my teacher. Did you do your homework? Yes, I did, ma'am. If you consider copying it from my friend, doing it. <laughs> it's, it's so easy, those little things like that. And it was just a normal way of life, but God says, that's all put away, and now the new has become, and, and I'm Christ-like, and so, did you do your homework? No, ma'am, I copied it. That's a fun thing to tell your teacher, isn't it? Because you know what's coming. Go do it again, and then do it three more times, and you know, your grades are now docked by 50% or whatever they decide to do, the consequence for that. The church Christ in us gives us the ability to not live in that lifestyle of lying, but to truth, speak truthfully to his neighbor. Remember, church, lying destroys trust. We just can't get caught up in that routine. We have to learn to live above that, to live different from that. So challenge number one for Christian living, stop lying, stop speaking non-truth. Speak the truth in every circumstance, always. There's challenge number one. Now let's go on to the next one, verses 26 and 27. Let me read it with you. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. So number one, lying, and then it goes to number two, becoming angry. Come on, Paul, take it easy. How many of you have ever gotten angry? Sure, I can... List once or twice, or maybe three times, I've gotten angry. Last night, working on my Suburban. Anger, this issue of anger. Now, this is a very interesting topic to discuss. Because anger isn't necessarily sin. It's a human emotion that we have. It's an emotion that even Jesus had. And so we'll talk about that in a moment. But anger can so very quickly become sin... And so this balance of figuring out what healthy and righteous anger is and the difference between healthy and, and unhealthy anger, righteous and unrighteous anger, really is something we have to deal with. And so let's walk through this a little bit this morning. We've all been there. We've all had these moments of anger. And again, just because you're angry doesn't mean you have sin. Understand that. And anger isn't necessarily a bad thing when it's handled properly. 
Uh, how we handle anger determines whether it becomes sin or not. And I want us to understand this very clearly this morning. How we handle those moments of anger are determined when it becomes sin and when it doesn't. Case in point, last night working on my Suburban, trying to get it ready for the trip we're going to take out and haul the kids out there. And so had some issues going on. And uh, so we spent two hours finding parts, four trips to the parts store. Frustrating. <laughs> the actual job took us like an hour, uh, maybe two hours, and then an hour and a half worth of running back and forth to the parts store, and then we get in this thing, and I can't figure out how to get this gear in the rear end back in there, and in the moment, I'm saying, Lord, you need to help me, because I'm going to start throwing things. I just don't want to smack it, I'm going to hit it, that's, that's what I want to do in this moment. How do you deal with those moments when that anger comes, and you say, okay, Lord, I can throw a wrench. I can say thank you, Jesus, and figure out this thing and keep working my way through it. How much easier is it and much more satisfying to throw a wrench? I was just plain old honesty this morning. <laughs> Matt was there, so I didn't throw any wrenches. So I'm glad he was there with me to keep me honest. <laughs> but those moments like that, when that anger comes and confronts us and how we deal with it, determines so much of whether it becomes sin or whether it isn't. We will become angry. Let's go back and read that again. In your anger, do not sin. Verse 26. It doesn't say if you become angry. It doesn't say you might become angry. And if you do, what's he say? He says, in your anger, do not sin. It's a normal emotion. It's a normal part of human life. It's okay. It's an okay feeling. It's an okay emotion to have. Paul said it. In your anger, do not sin. So we understand that. It's going to be a part of us. Church, the more we know Jesus, the more we become like Jesus, then the less we deal with this emotion as a sin in our life. Now let me say that again. I want you to understand what I'm saying. The more we know Jesus, the more we become like Jesus, the less we deal with this emotion as a sin in our life. But the more you know Jesus, the more you become like Jesus, doesn't mean you're going to get angry less. Now hopefully that will happen and that will be a part of that process, but you're still going to have moments of anger and that's okay. How we deal with them determines whether it becomes sin or whether it doesn't. But the more we become more like Jesus... The last time we're going to have to come back and say, God, forgive me. I lost it. Man, I got angry and I threw the wrench. Or I got angry and I cussed this guy out. Or I got angry and I, whatever reaction you have. The more we're like Jesus, the less we're going to come to him and say, God, forgive me in my anger. We're going to be able to say, God, you helped me in my anger. Thank you. And that's the, the, the change that has to happen. The old lifestyle is going to say, God, forgive me. The new lifestyle in Christ is going to be a lot more saying, God, thank you for helping me deal with my anger and not let it get out of control. Now, uh, so let me, let me break this anger down into two parts, healthy anger and sinful anger. And let's look at it from that perspective a little bit. Now, again, I'm not going to try to hit everything and tell you exactly, you know, this is healthy and unhealthy anger and you deal with it, but I hopefully we'll be able to understand a little bit more clearly what healthy anger looks like versus unhealthy or sinful anger. Healthy anger or righteous anger, as we like to call it sometimes in the church, is simply this. It is not directed at a person or at God. Now I have had people tell me, boy, I get mad at God and I just tell him off. And I say, you might want to be careful because that's not a good idea. Uh, it's okay to be upset with God. There's times when I'm saying, God, what's the deal? I don't understand what's going on here, and I don't get what's going on, and I'm trying to process this, and, and I'm frustrated with the situation, God, and what's happening. And those feelings are okay, but I can't take the audacity to say, I can just tell God off, because God can take it. No, that's not the case at all. Now, be careful how you handle that. Healthy anger, righteous anger is not directed at a person or at God. Understand that. Healthy anger, righteous anger is not directed at a person or it's not 